brothers and sisters, welcome to one of the most happiest places here on earth. Dito lang yan sa Feast Binangonan. Yan. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. I don't know if there's someone who's watching beside you right now, but kung meron man or kung wala, just stop yourself. Kindly tap yourself. Napikin mo yung sarili mo. Tell yourself, God is good. All the time. God is good all the time. Hindi natin makakalimutan yan kasi nanggaling yan um, sa movie na ang title is uh, Three Idiots, di ba? Sobrang, sobrang sarap sa pakiramdam na lagi nating maalala na lagi siyang nandyan. In spite of experiencing a lot of challenges right now. Di ba? Nowadays parang sobrang normal na lang na pasundot-sundot yung mga problema. Like, every other day may mangyayari. Every month may mangyayaring kakaiba. Di ba? This pandemic, sakit na ganito, gulo sa ibang lugar, may sumabog sa ganito. It's really um, crazy kung iisipin. Parang nakakabaliw siya kung iisipin na why are these things keep on happening? Di ba? Pero lagi lang natin aalalahanin na these are challenges na binibigay niya. And hindi siya magbibigay ng problema or ng pagsubok na hindi natin kaya kaya lang pa So, let us not forget that there's always the one who will be our lifeline. Huwag natin yung kakalimutan. Kasi siya never niya tayong kakalimutan. Oh, oh, oh. Nakakalungkot isipin yung mga nangyayari. But still, look at the brighter side. Meron niyang magandang kapalit. Amen, brothers and sisters. With that, let us worship our Lord through the song,
hard for your never ending love. You're always keep on keep on guiding us like that. But praising you. Good day everyone! Welcome to our feast at home. Ako po si Brother Monching and today we will continue our series on the best preaching ever. Hindi po kami yung mga best preachers, no? Si Jesus ang the best preacher. And uh, itong series na ito is uh, a continuation nung uh, si Jesus ay nagpipreach dun sa Mount. Okay? The title of uh, the talk today is this. You're a factory of miracles. Grabe. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, punong-puno ng milagro sa iyong buhay. Kaya bago tayo magsimula, eh, pwede ko ba kayong tanungin kung ano-anong mga milagro ang mga natanggap ninyo sa inyong uh, buhay na itong nakaraang linggo? Mapamaliit, mapalak, ma ma malaki, <laughs> okay lang yan. Inaanyayahan ko po kayong comment lang dito sa comment box. No? Uh, maganda na umpisahan natin yung uh, ating feast, yung ating araw, yung ating linggo ng uh, mga biyaya. Nang sa gayon, yung matanggal yung mga bad vibes at mapalitan ng mga good vibes. Maganda yung nababasa natin yun, yung mga magaganda at nagko-comment tayo para napapaalalahanan tayo na bagamat maraming hindi magandang nangyayari sa buhay natin, eh marami pa rin yung mga magaganda. Kaya paki-comment lang po rito, no? ay uh, gustong gusto po talaga namin basahin yan. Nakaka-inspire pati kami. Pati ako mismo, binabasa ko yung mga yan. Kung ako tatanungin ninyo, ang blessing ko na itong nakarang linggo ay nakapag-light group kami. No? Or yung uh, tinatawag nating caring group. Okay? Sa couples ministry. Yan, meron kaming dalawang group sa couples ministry. Matagal na namin na uh, silang hindi nakausap. Siguro mga isang buwan mahigit. No? At uh, nung kami ay nakapagkamustahan ng konti sa, sa internet, no? sa Zoom, ay nakakatuwa, namiss ko silang lahat. At uh, ang saya-saya ng feeling na nakapag-fellowship kami, no? nakapag-share kami ng mga blessing, na ipagdasal namin ng isa't isa, ay napakaganda talaga. In line with that, inaanyayahan ko po kayo kung gusto nyo sumali sa isang uh, support group or connect group ay mag-message lang po kayo dito. We would be glad to uh, uh, direct you okay? doon sa mga groups na meron tayo dito sa feast. Merong couples ministry, merong singles ministry, merong youth ministry. Yung iba, meron pang senior citizens ministry. So mag-message lang po kayo. Okay? Kung uh, saan nyo ito napapanood, then they would be very, very glad to introduce you to new sets of good friends. You can also join and uh, serve our ministry. Uh, kahit na ngayon sa pandemic, pwede pa rin tayong mag-serve. Lalong-lalo na kung may talent kayo dito sa media, magaling kayo mag-edit ng uh, uh, videos, marunong kayong kumanta, tumugtog, kahit anong talento na pwede nyo i-share for the kingdom of God, just to message us again. And uh, we would be very, very happy and honored to introduce you to the ministry that you desire. And lastly, if you want to help us, you know, you can also bless us and the whole community and, uh, you know, help us with our mission to spread the love of God to as many people by giving, by donating. You can give your lo love offerings and tithes to the details here. We'll post it on the screen. Okay? Thank you for your generosity. Yung inyo pong tulong ay napakalayo ng nararating sa ating ministry. Alright? Sige. Inumpisahan ko ng uh, blessing, no? Um, or miracle, kasi yun yung title ng ating talk. Alam ko naman na mahirap ang sitwasyon ngayon. Hello, MECQ na ulit. Parang kailan lang, no? Ba babalik ka rin. <laughs> Walang masakyan na naman. Ay, yung iba wala na namang trabaho, No? Uh, napakaraming masasamang balita. Uh, kawawa yung mga nasa ano, Lebanon. Nabaltaan nyo ba yun? Kawawa. Pagdasal natin sila. Ang tindi, biro mo, talagang yung buong bansa nila is talagang economic uh, breakdown. Tapos uh, yung COVID. Tapos uh, tindi nung sumabog. Ang daming namatay at nasugatan. 
you know, kahit saan ka tumingin, puro bad news, open social media, and you will see, ang daming nakakatakot, ang daming nakakainis, ang daming nakakaasar. Pero bukod sa mga hindi magagandang nangyayari sa mundo, ang tanong ko sa iyo, ano-ano yung mga magagandang nangyayari sa buhay mo? No? Siguro, doon tayo mag-focus. Kapatid, hindi tayo mauubusan ng bad news sa mundo. Pero, hindi rin tayo mauubusan ng good news sa mundo. Ang tanong, saan ka laging nagpo-focus? Sa maganda o sa hindi maganda? Ikaw ba ay laging nag-aabang ng mga mangyayaring mali o mga hindi magaganda? O ikaw ba ay nag-aabang at handang pumuna ng mga mabubuti at magaganda? Handaan mo, hindi natin kontrolado kung anong pwedeng mangyari sa mundo sa paligid natin. Pero makokontrol mo kung ano ang magiging sitwasyon at kalidad ng puso mo. Alright, simulan na natin ang ating feast sa isang panalangin sa ngala ng Ama ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessing, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's honor the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Paborito ko po ang Bible verse na babasahin natin ngayon. Actually, marami talaga ako paborito. Pero ito ay napapanhod. I am so sure gustong gusto nyo ito <laughs> kapag narinig na niya. ba? Diba? Kasi marami tayong hinihingi sa Diyos. Marami tayong hinahanap ng mga oportunidad at mga pagkakataon, lalong-lalo na itong mga panahong ito. The reading is taken from Matthew 7, 7-8. And it says, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Uh, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Napaganda! <laughs> Sinabi ni Jesus ito nung siya ay nagpipreach sa Mount. At hulaan mo kung sino ang mga audience. It is very good to take note that lahat halos ng kanyang kausap dito ay eh, mga talagang mahihirap, dukha, kapuspalad. Sila yung mga isang kahig, isang tuka doon sa kanilang um, uh, community nung araw. Talagang sila yung uh, poorest of the poor. Kasi ang, ang layo ng estado ng mga ordinaryong tao doon sa talagang uh, alam mo yon may kapit <laughs> sa sa posisyon no yung mga hudyo sila ay sinakop nung uh, halos nakapalibot sa kanila yung mga sundalong Romano at talagang uh, namang ang layo there is a very big indifference at that time no sila ay pinagnanakawan ini-extort no minamaltrato at napakalaki ng mga tax na ipinapatong sa kanila. Grabe ang pahirap sa kanila ng mga sundalong Romano noon, no? Matinding kawalan, matinding pang-aalipusta ang inaabot nila. Marami sa kanila ay eh, talagang walang-wala na, hirap na hirap na, said na said na. Kaya naman nung pinipreach at sinasabi ni Jesus ito sa kanila, eh talagang shock na shock sila. 'Di ba? Sabi dun sa mga previous uh, Uh, reading na binasa natin ng mga nakarang linggo. Sabi ni Jesus, do not worry. Wow! <laughs> Paano kung ikaw yung nasa kalagayan nila? Ngayon nga lang, eh, talagang grabe na tayo mag-worry. No? Ano pa? Sinabi rin ni Jesus nung sa mga binasa natin ng mga nakarang linggo, look at the birds of the sky. Diba? Hindi pinapabayaan ng Diyos. Pati yung mga ibong ligaw. Ano? Eh, eh, hindi niya pinapabayaan. Ikaw pa kaya? O, oh, di ba? Ngayon naman ang sinasabi naman ni Jesus, no? 
Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Mapapaisip ka. <laughs> Pero mo, kung, kung tayo yung nakikinig, sila yung parang mga helpless nung araw. Kahit na ganito ang sitwasyon natin, di hamak na mas maganda ang estado ng buhay natin kaysa dun sa mga kausap ni Jesus nung araw na yun. No? Hirap na hirap ang mga taong ito noon. Talagang uh, I, I can just imagine and put into words. No? Tapos puro ganito ang sinasabi ni Jesus. Puro hope. Eh, sinasabi niya ito sa mga hopeless people. No? Nawawala na sila ng pag-asa, na depress na sila, pero sinasaksakan ni Jesus ng puro hope, puro promises. Hindi kaya He was giving some sort of uh, false hopes or false promises sa kanila? Paano ko nasabi ito? I mean, uh, sig- sigurado namang nagdadasal yung mga tao noon. I'm sure na nanampalataya sila sa Diyos noon. Pero, I'm so sure na may mga araw na bumabangon sila at gumigising sila na kumakalamang sigmura nila at wala silang makakain sa mga ilang araw. no? Hindi naman araw-araw may pagkain. <laughs> I'm sure itong mga uh, crowd na kausap ni Jesus. But still, Jesus preached it anyway. You know? The hope that God brings. Why? Dahil naniniwala si Jesus na bagamat minsan masalimot ang mundo, mananatili pa rin tapat. Mananatili pa rin tapat. Sapat <laughs> ang pag-ibig at ang pangako ng ating Diyos. Ano-ano yung mga pangakong yun? Okay? That God will provide. Amen? Sabihin mo nga yun, God will provide. You can type that in the comment too. God will provide. Yun yung, yung gustong idiin ni Jesus doon sa mga nakikinig. At yun din ang gusto kong manood sa mga puso nating lahat ngayon. Na kahit sa oras ng kawalan, alinlangan, takot ka ba, gusto kong sabihin sa iyo na nauubos na lahat ng, ng, ng pera mo, hindi mo na alam kung saan ka kukuha bukas. God will provide. Amen? Mananatili pa rin tapat ang kabutihan at ang pagiging mapagbigay o, o the generosity of God will always prevail and we will live in abundance. Ah, speaking of abundance, ano nga ba ang uh, Tagalog ng abundance, Brother Monching? Lagi mo sinasabi. Okay, ang Tagalog ng abundance ay kasaganahan. Oh, di ba? Ano kayang klaseng kasaganahan ang itinutukoy ni Jesus dito, nung, nung, nung sinasabi niya at kinakausap niya yung mga tao? Alright, sagutin natin yan. Una, kasaganahan sa mga non-material things. Ah, non-material abundance. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Okay? Kahit na gaano sila kahirap noon, sila ay marunong maging mapagpasalamat. Oh, they are grateful dahil mayaman sila. Sa, iba, sa ibang bagay, salat man sila sa pera, mayaman naman sila sa ibang bagay. And sometimes, my friends, I know you would agree with me na kahit na maraming marami kang pera, kung salat ka dito sa mga sasabihin ko ay napakalungkot ng buhay. You compare that kung hindi ka masyadong mayaman pero sagana ka dito sa mga sasabihin ko, I'm so sure you're, uh, you'd agree with me na you are very blessed. Amen? Yung mga taong yun, kausap niya bagamat sa lahat sa buhay, ha? Uh, naghihirap pinansyal, mayaman sila dahil una, alam nila na kasama nila ang Diyos. Number one. Pangalawa, sagana sila sa pagmamahal ng kanilang pamilya. Pagpapalit mo ba sa pera yun? I don't think so. Sagana sila sa kaibigan, sa, sa pag-ibig, sa saya, joy and peace. No? Sagana sila dyan. Anhin mo yung pera kung sarat ka naman dyan. Mas nakakatakot yun. Alright? So, sila ay mayaman sa non-material things. Pero bukod doon, sagana pa rin sila sa mga material things. Paano nangyari yun? <laughs> Akala ko ba mahirap sila, Brother Mon? Paano sila naging sagana sa material things? Well, friends, tandaan natin na ang kausap ni Jesus noon ay mga generally poor. Okay? So, nung sinabi ni Jesus na 
Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. And knock and the door would be open to you. Hindi sila naghahanap ng mga maluluhong bagay. Ulitin ko. Ask. Hindi sila humihingi ng mga maluluhong bagay. Seek. Hindi sila naghahanap ng mga uh, magagarbong bagay. No? Uh, 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 ask. Seek. Knock. Hindi sila kumakatok sa mga pintuan <laughs> ng mga <laughs> mansyon na gusto nilang bilhin. <laughs> yes, hindi sila humihingi ng kotse, Air Jordan, uh, iPhone, or MacBook. Okay? Ano yung hinahanap nila? Simple lang, nagkahanap sila at humihingi sila ng mga basic needs na pangangailangan nila sa araw-araw para mabuhay. Yun yung kanilang ina-ask. Yun yung kanilang sinisig at yun yung kinakatok-patok nila sa Diyos. Friends, sometimes we need to quantify our needs. Tignan natin, eto bang mga needs na to ay talagang importante? Ito ba ay kailangan para mabuhay? Ito ba yung tinatawag na basic needs? O, eto bang mga needs na gusto natin, na hinihilig natin sa Diyos, eh, mga parang uh, kailangan para magkaroon ng marangyang buhay. Magkaiba yon. I am so sure, okay, na ibinibigay sa atin ng Diyos ang ating mga basic na pangangailangan para mabuhay. That is a fact. At kung gusto mo ng marangyang buhay, eh, wala namang masama ron. <laughs> okay? Wala namang masama ron. In fact, maganda yon. Mabuti yun. Mangarap ka, munlad ka, kahit na yumamang ka ng limpak-limpak na yaman, eh maganda yun. Dahil sa ganun, marami kang matutulungan na tao. Okay? Pero, pagtrabahuhan mo. <laughs> Naintindihan mo? Pagtrabahuhan mo. Ibinibigay ng Diyos lahat ng mga pangangailangan mo, basic needs. Ngayon, kung mga gusto mo ng mga iba pang bagay, lalo na yung mga magagarbong bagay sa buhay, walang masama ron, pero pagtrabahuhan mo. Malinaw. <laughs> ah, ah, Brother Munching, di ba ah, parang ah, ah, mahirap naman yon Kaya nga hinihingi ko na nga lang sa Diyos eh, kasi parang imposible. No! I so much believe that binigay na sa'yo ng Diyos ang lahat ng kailangan mo para makamit yung pangarap mo. Nasa sa'yo na lang yon kapatid. Alright? Pero that's, <laughs> let's save that for another topic. Okay? Again, walang masamang maghangad at mangarap. Okay? Pero binigyan ka ng Diyos ng talento at galing, kaya gamitin mo. But one thing is for certain, ano yun? Sadyang mabait at sadyang mapagbigay ang Diyos. Okay? In our next verse, we will prove okay, na talagang ang ating Diyos ay isang mapagbigay na Diyos. Matthew 7 verse 9 to 11, it says, You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Ah, imbis na bat, imbis na tinapay, bato. Or, if they ask for fish, do you give them snake? But, 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 isda naging uh, ahas. Of course not. So, eto na. Pakinggan mo buti ha. So, if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, How much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? Tama nga naman. Oh, may sense. Okay? Bago natin uh, pag-usapan yung pinaka-main message, uh, gusto ko lang uh, pag-usapan natin yung comparison na ginawa ni Jesus. Okay? Gumamit si Jesus ng mga bagay na halos, eh, halos magkakamuka, halos magkakatulad. Katulad ng bread and stone. Paano naging magkatulad yun? <laughs> Paano naging magkamukha yung brother Monching? Ganun to kasi yan. Yung kanilang tinapay noon, di ba? Yung uh, unleavened bread, okay? yung parang pita. No? Kapag yun ay uh, uh, pinunit-punit, okay? tapos isasaw-saw nila yon yung parang pinagpunit-punit na pirapiras yung mga tinapay nila, eh magkamukha uh, talagang uh, kahawig ng mga puting bato na nakakalat doon sa gilid ng... Uh, Uh, sea of Galilee. So, magkamuka sila. Magkamuka, pero hindi magkaparehas. Pangalawa, ano yung ginamit? Fish and snake. Paano naging magkamuka yon? 
Well, eto ah, most likely, ang tinutukoy siguro ni Jesus doon, hindi yung ahas na anaconda, kundi igat, ill, or palos. Okay? Parehas sila na nauhuli sa tubig. Actually, yung igat at ill, parang ahas talaga. Magkamuka, magkahawig. Alright? Kaya lang, yung ill, okay? bawal na bawal silang kumain, yung mga hudyo, bawal kumain ng ill. Okay? At iba pang mga bagay, marami pang iba. These are considered unclean in the Mosaic Law. So, magkamuka, isda, okay? Or igat, or ahas, pero magkaiba. Yung isa pwede nilang kainin, yung isa hindi pwede. So, para saan ba itong comparison na ito? Itong magkahawig at magkamuka na bagay, bakit, bakit sinabi ito dito? Tulad ng bread, stone, fish, snake. Ito na yung sagot dyan. Okay? Kung mapapansin nyo, yung isa mabuti at yung isa masama. Pero magkahawig sila. What's the point? Akala mo parehas, pero <laughs> peke. Wow, mali. Ha? Hindi maganda. At ang gustong sabihin ni Jesus um, sa ating lahat na ang Diyos ay hindi tayo lolokohin. Hindi tayo bibigyan ng akala mo yun na, pero peke pala. Ang Diyos ay hindi paasa. Ha? Hindi tayo bibigyan ng fake blessings, hindi tayo bibigyan ng fake promises. Dahil hindi siya fake na Diyos. Ang ibibigay lagi sa atin ng Diyos, laging maganda at laging mabuti. Okay? Hindi tayo lolokohin. Gustong-gusto ko yung sinabi sa verse na may mga masasamang tao sa mundo. At totoo nga naman nagkalat ang masasamang tao sa mundo. Pero ganun pa man, kahit gaano sila kasama, sinisigurado ko sa'yo, hangad pa rin nila sa kanilang pamilya, lalong-lalo sa kanilang mga anak ay mabuti. And that's true. Kahit gaano kasama ang isang tao, pinipilit nilang ibigay lahat ng pangangailangan nila sa kanilang mga anak. Pagkain, damit, iba pang mga material na bagay. Minsan nga, pati luho, ibibigay pa. At kahit masasama yung kanilang magulang, eh, kahit hangal pa siguro yung kaluluwa nun, talagang pagka humiling ang kanilang anak, pag dumaing ang kanilang anak, eh, eh, talagang matutunaw ang kahit anong tigas na puso ng isang magulang. Okay? Kung ang masamang tao, mahal na mahal ang kanilang anak. Kung ang masamang tao, nukuno ka ng kasalanan na tao, ipoprovide ang mga pangangailangan ng kanyang mga anak. All the more, lalong-lalo na, ang ating mabuting ama na nasa langit. Okay? I am so sure, 100%, na ibibigay niya ang ating pangangailangan. Again, hindi perpekto ang mga magulang natin. Ako isang magulang. Ako isang tatay. Napakalayo ko po sa pagiging perpekto. Pero buti na lamang, meron tayong perpektong Diyos. Meron tayong perpektong ama na nasa langit na hangad lagi ay mabuti para sa atin. Thank God. Okay? Because you are a God that provides. Amen? Amen. Let's close with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. Dahil napakabuti mo. Napaka mapagbigay mo. Salamat, Panginoon, sa lahat ng biyaya na binibigay mo sa amin. Pati yung mga hindi namin napapansin, hindi namin nakikita. At yung mga ibibigay mo pa lamang inaangkin na namin, Panginoon. Wala kang katulad sa pagmamahal. Wala kang katulad sa pagbibigay. Maraming maraming salamat po. Patuloy niyo kaming alagaan, gabayan, patuloy, patuloy kayo mag-provide, Panginoon, para sa aming mga pangangailangan. Bless everyone that is watching right now. Bless the entire world right now. We need you all the more right now. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. That's all welcome, Brother Neo Kalonghe. Thank you, Brother Monching. 
And for today, our big message is this, live in God's generosity. Our key verse for today gives us three powerful and beautiful messages. One, picture the right portrait. Two, persist with the right purpose. Third, pray with the right practice. And for the first message, picture the right portrait. We get a glimpse of how Jesus saw the Father. And with that, we also get His portrait of God. You know, this is a fact, my dear friends. The way we pray is totally based on how we see God. Kung paano tayo nagdarasal, eh ganun din natin nakikita ang Diyos sa mga buhay natin. At para kay Jesus, ang Ama ay isang amang napaka-generous. Kaya nga sabi ni Jesus, ask, seek, and knock. I believe, my dear friends, that you know, the understanding of Jesus Christ came from being steeped in the Hebrew Scriptures. For that, we need to go back to the basic, to the very beginning. At saan yun? Sa Garden of Eden. God was generous of giving Adam and Eve the freedom to eat every fruit. Except one. Kaya naman, ito ay yung pagkakataong kinuha ng kalaban para linlangin si Eva at saka si Adan. Sabi ng kalaban, talaga bang sinabi ng Diyos na pwede mong kainin ng lahat ng bagay, lahat ng prutas, sardin na ito, maliban sa isa? And you know what, my dear friends, whenever the devil tempts you to sin, it all starts by inserting into our mind this insidious thought that God is stingy. Sinasabi ng kalaban sa atin, bago tayo gumawa ng kasalanan, sinasabi niya sa atin, para tuksuin tayo, awadamot ang Diyos, at hindi ka niya bibigyan ng mga nais mo. God is stingy. The, the, the enemy would say, do you want something? He won't give it to you. Take matters into your hands and cheat, steal, lie, and kill. And here's the truth, my dear friends. All sin at its core is a lack of trust in God's generosity. A few verse later, my dear friends, this story is replayed. Sa ang kwento? Ito, sa pagkakataong ito, sa kwento ng dalawang magkapatid, si Cain at saka si Abel. No? Si Cain at saka si Abel, eh magkapatid, they offer their sacrifices to God. And you know what? Diba, ang kwento rito, kanina yung tinanggap ng Panginoon na offering kay Abel. Yung kay Cain, hindi niya tinanggap. Tapos, tinan niyo ha, sa Genesis 4 verse 6, tinap, tinanong ng Panginoon, Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain, Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Tanong mo sa akin kung ano. God will also bless Cain in his own perfect time, in his own perfect moment. But, Cain had a very big problem. Ask me what? He did not trust in God's generosity. At anong resulta? He took matters into his own hands and killed his brother Abel. All sin is rooted in a scarcity mindset. Ang kalaban, mga kaibigan, will always point to you the things that you don't have, magnifying the things that you don't have, covering the fact that there are 9,999 fruit trees waiting for picking. At yung isa lang ang hindi mo pa pwedeng galawin. Alam niyo mga kapatid, alam niyo naman, open secret naman itong mga kapatid na ako ay history teacher by profession. No, history major ako nung college. At alam niyo mga kapatid, na lahat ng digmaan sa kasaysayan ng daigdig, lahat yan ay nagmula sa scarcity mindset. Diba? Yung most recent na World War, yung World War II, huwag kayo mag-alala, hindi, hindi pa ako buhay niyan. Dahil kwento lang sa akin. Diba? Yung World War II, uh, ang daming tao ang namatay. Bakit? Anong pinag-aagawa ng mga tao doon? Teritoryo. Scarcity mindset. Amen? Message number two. Persist with the right purpose. Jesus asked, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Tanong mo sa akin kung ano. You don't ask for once. You don't ask for twice. You don't ask for thrice. You don't seek once or twice or thrice. You don't knock the door once or twice or thrice. 
you persist until you have what you are seeking for. Do you know the secret of success? The secret is no secret. Alam na lang lahat ng mga taong successful sa buhay yan. The secret of success is persistence. Persistence trumps talent anytime. The world is populated by the very talented people who are wasting their lives because they don't persist. Let's go back to the story of Cain. Should, uh, you know, nung pagkakataong nireject ng Panginoon ang offering ni Cain sa Panginoon, siguro it could have been a different story if Cain persisted not twice, not thrice, but up until God accepted his offering. If you deeply trust in God's generosity, you will persist. And you know what? Persistence is connected to one other thing. By praying and asking with persistence, you gain what we call clarity. And clarity is power. I think one of the glaring reasons why we don't achieve anything is because we are not sure in our purpose. No clear directions. Let me share you a story. Alam nyo, meron akong dalawang anak, no? At saka isang asawa. <laughs> Gusto ko lang linawin yan. Dalawang anak, isang asawa. Of course, yun na nyo ha, sa dalawang anak namin na yun, dumaan kami sa punto na, syempre, paglabas naman ng, 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 ng anak mo, di ba? Hindi naman kagad nagsasalita yan. At siyempre, kapag, um, kapag ang bata, ang baby, for example, mga, mga from one year old hanggang mga first months, or, ay first year, sorry, one year old, ang first year, ang second year, hindi pa naman marunong magsalita yan eh. At dumating sa punto mga kapatid, di ba, natandaan natin, yung mga anak natin, yung mga pamangkin natin, halimbawa, na kapag umiiyak yung mga batang yan, nang hindi pa marunong magsalita, Anong usually ginagawa nila? Kapag meron silang kailangan, anong ginagawa nila? Umiiyak sila. Waaaaaah! Ikaw naman, dahil gusto mo siyang isatisfy, you would ask, Anong gusto mo, anak? Anong gusto mo? Gusto mong dede? Gusto mong dede? Gusto mong gatas? Anong sasagot sa'yo ng bata? Hindi pa siya marunong magsalita. Waaaaaah! Ay, ay, baby, gusto mo pa magpalit ng diaper? Anong sasagot ng bata? So, di ba siya marunong magsalita? So, kahit na anong bagay ang ibigay mo sa isang batang hindi pa marunong magsalita, hindi siya magsasalita at hindi siya titigil umiyak. Bakit? Kasi meron siyang gustong bagay na gusto mong maibigay sa kanya, pero ang problema, hindi mo maibigay sa kanya. Bakit? Kasi hindi malinaw. Lacking ang clarity. Are you listening? Here's what I realized, my dear friends. God's universe does not respond to fuzziness. Hindi sumasagot ang universe sa hiling mong hindi malinaw. Sa hiling mong hindi sigurado. It responds only to clarity. Let me ask you this question. Are you clear with what you want? Are you clear with your purpose? And to continue, let's all welcome Brother Marky. Message number three, pray with the right practice. Once again, imagine Jesus' audience, the poor. Do you think Jesus wanted them just to pray for their food and wait for someone to feed them? Or did Jesus want them to work you know like planting fishing or sell something i believe that in the mind of jesus prayer is very practical that's why jesus used three verbs ask seek and knock not just ask I've been trying to follow Jesus sin no, sincerely this past few years, trying to manage my time at work and service. You know? And I realized one thing, 
There should be no separation between prayer and action. They're just one. God calls us to active prayer and prayerful action. Now, the great Saint Benedict's motto was Ora et Labora, which is in Latin for prayer and work, not prayer or work. One doesn't contradict the other. Now, God gives us, you know, God gives you, God gives us raw materials. My son Gabe, his favorite toy is Lego. When he was young, we bought him a, a small set of Lego. A small set, you know, a set of, you know, a one set. It was like 10 pieces. You know, but in his hands, those 10 cubes turn, you know, those 10 Legos, he can turn them into an airplane and he, you know, he just plays with it. It was incredible, you know. Ang saya-saya namin, you know, when we saw him, you know, being, doing stuff with the Lego, you know. And we gave him more, you know, we gave him more Legos to play with. And he created more airplanes and, you know, he created ships, he created houses, buildings. You know, siya ng isang parang malaking, you know, like a big city there. And I believe God works that way. You need to work with what you have. Don't complain. No, no Lord, back it 10 pieces long. That's not how life works. If, if you only have like 10 Legos or 10 cubes, work with it. Work with those 10. Stop complaining that you don't have enough talents. Don't complain that you don't have enough capital, you know, enough capital or puhunan to start a small business. Don't complain that you don't have enough connections. You have enough to start something small. And as God sees you faithful in small things, God will give you better things, you know, bigger and better things soon. And soon he'll, you know, he'll give you more and more raw materials for your factory because you're a factory of miracles. I grew up seeing places, you know, I grew up, grew up you know, driving to places where there are lots of factories. And well, but because of this pandemic, marami nang sara. You know, and nakakalungkot. You know, kasi you know, you can see big machines and dami and and dami ding delivery vans na nakabilad na lang sa parking, you know, nagagabukan na lang sa parking lot. And today, I know a few of those factories started to operate again. And those machi you know, and those machines that you maingay, <laughs> you know, they are running again. And those vans, they are delivering goods again. Brothers and sisters, you're a walking, talking, praying factory of miracles. That's how God made you. You don't only pray for miracles, you produce them. Perhaps your factory is you know, close down right now, but today, let God revive your factory of miracles. I speak in abundance into your life. I command that your factory of mir miracles start running again. I declare that your life will produce more miracles. Now, in conclusion, you have to align your will to His will, God's will. Now, let me end with a truth that was presumed in our key passage in the Gospel of John 14, verse 14. And Jesus said, Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Have you ever wondered, what does it mean to pray in Jesus' name? When you pray in Jesus' name, you're saying that if Jesus were in your place, He would be praying the exact same prayer. Praying in Jesus' name means praying with the heart of Jesus. Praying in Jesus' name means being another Jesus in the world. Being His hands, His feet, His mind, His presence in the world. Praying in Jesus' name means aligning your will with 
his will. But I know the objection to this thought. Some people have a wrong notion of God's will. For many people, God's will is about knowing whether kung magmamigrate ka ba sa Australia or not, or whether to work from one call center to another call center. Let me clarify this as loud as I can. God's will is it about details, but about direction. We think it's about details. That's why so many Christians, you know, get paralyzed, you know, get frozen, you know, they can't move because they think God's will is, is God's will is in the details. They're afraid of making mistakes. If God wanted to micromanage our lives, he should have created robots. But he didn't do that. Hindi yun ang ginawa niya. He created us with a phenomenal imagination, creative you know, creativity, and a beautiful intelligence right here. You know, skills and stuff that he would want us to use. God's will is about overall direction about vision, about mission. He leaves the details to us. So, do, so what is God's will? Here's my answer. In essence, God's will is to love like Jesus. This is God's will for your life, to be another Jesus in the world, to bring heaven down on earth, to be God's embrace to the people in your life. Brothers and sisters, live in God's generosity and bring others to live in that generosity. May your prayers and dreams come true. Yeah.